What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Rolling the Bomb. I'm your host, Zach Moore. I just got done watching the Extreme Series Vegas. I did it probably an hour and a half ago. Uh, nothing too crazy. Not a very um, eventful race, but that doesn't mean it was a bad race. I thought it was a solid Extreme Series race. Nothing the Cup Series couldn't do and put on. Uh, There's only 12 lead changes. This race was, to me, a joke. It was racing dominated race. Uh, our, our winner, John Hunter Nemechek, led 99 laps, and then Chandler Smith, who I thought was the best car all day, and then 74 laps. We only had one caution. It was on lap nine. Parker Rexlaff got loose on turn four. Spawn came down. Sam Mayer that tore up some of Sam Mayer's car, right side of it, damaged the wheel well. Ruined Sam Mayer's day. He, he, he was eliminated from the race because of that. I mean, I believe, listening to Sam Mayer's interview, he's already led, he's already raced in a combined 200 laps this season. And a lot of that has to do with the Super Speedway type racing we were seeing. Guys are getting take, taken out early because of, you know, other people's mistakes or getting wrecked. That's really stinks. Definitely bad momentum for him. Also, Parker Rexlaff, I think he had back-to-back top fives before getting involved in that wreck. And that was only major wreck. The rest were, I guess, single car accidents. Also, SVG had some engine problems. This was his first uh, official, you know, traditional oval. I believe he had a cylinder going out. I believe he failed post-race inspection like twice or had trouble getting through inspection. So he wasn't really able to get many laps under his belt, so that would probably hurt his experience. But, you know, you can't, he has really no ability to fix an engine issue that has to do more with the team. That, maybe that could have been fixed with more laps. more You could have diagnosed issues. I, I'm not an engineer, so I wouldn't really know how that would all work. But I'll a bumming day for him. But really, in this race, you know, I said it was, it was a Joe Gibbs type dominating day. Um, Chandler Smith, he had a really a rocket ship. He won both stages, was battling with his teammate the most. It was really just them two battling. They would trade the lead back and forth. Most of the time, I felt like when Chandler Smith took the lead from his teammate, he was able to pull away a good bit. He definitely, in my opinion, the stronger car. One stage won pretty comfortingly, and then, you know, he struggled. Their, their pit crew struggled on pit road. He lost a couple spots, I think, after the first pit stop. Um, I don't know, six spots or something like that. But he's able to have a strong enough car to get back to the front and regain the lead. Or I don't think he regained the lead out on stage two, but New Nana stage two was coming down to the wire, and Chandler Smith uh, was not pushing the issue, was patient, and made a, a turn three pass in the last lap of stage two to pass his teammate, John Hunter Nienczek, to take on the stage. It was a great racing right, right there. It was really awesome to see, fun to watch. Then we got in stage three, and, and a better pit stop by Chandler Smith's team. Got him out front there. He was able to kind of control the lead a little bit, but then I think he faded, and John Nienczek was able to take the lead and kind of hold the lead the rest of the race, and he fell back. I think the most Chandler Smith kind of fell back to was, I think, third. And now so they kind of ran there. Uh, Ronnie Herbst took second. Ronnie Herbst, I think, had the same chassis that he won this the past uh, the playoff race they had this past um, fall. His car was strong, but he never had that race pace, that race-winning pace. Uh, but then we did have a caution, like Parker Retzlaff was slow down near the pit road, Aikbrid, I'm not sure he had an issue or something. You know, the only really wreck we had was hit the lap nine wreck. The rest were kind of like single car incidents. I know um, Anthony Alfredo got in the wall with the number five car for Al Motorsports. Uh, so there wasn't anything big, no no big wrecks. No one got taken out from anything. After that caution, they restarted. It was the same two-horse race with Ryan Herbs and John Nunechek and Chandler Smith. Not happening. John Nugent was kind of had the had lead strong. Now there was some strategy going on, knowing that Chandler Smith was behind. There was a talks that he was going to try to pit early to get that track position. Um, but, you know, he pit early. He had a good pit stop. But John Nugent had a better pit stop. And Ryan Herbst also had a good pit stop. Uh, I think Ryan Herbst had actually had a worse pit stop. Also, Hill was able to take second there, kind of holding the lead. But then we had some strategy with Josh Williams and Justin Allgaier trying to stay out. That's what led to Justin Allgaier leading 11 laps and Josh Williams leading 10 laps. But due to the, the laps winding down, they knew they had to get fuel, and John Nugent was catching them getting in this race. Uh, there was just really nothing they had to do. They, they, they didn't get a caution. And that's what kind of gave John Nugent the ability to take the lead uh, and just hold on to it. But, you know, he managed like a four-second gap. And then at the end of that race, Cole Custer came on strong. He was clicking off cars, and that's where you saw that good speed that he had. You know, he won the pole uh, and was able to take take that fast car and, and on near the end of the race to make up spots and take home second place. But all in all, John didn't check to go in the W. A, not a full-time guy. was full-time last year. Now he's with Legacy Motor Club, racing part-time schedule with uh, Joe Gibbs. 
So it's cool to see him. Definitely stinks. You know, he takes away a win from a extreme series guy. You know, like his teammate, a guy that probably deserved it more. But I'm not going to blame that. I like when the cup guys come down. I probably, I probably, I rather see Kyle Busch or, you know, Denny Hamlin or, you know, a, a bigger cup name race in those races. But it's fine to see. And, you know, he won the race. He deserved to win the race. He was one of the best cars, top two best car, and took home the W. We're looking at the top ten finishers. John Nienchek first. Cole Custer second. Jenner Smith third, Austin Hill fourth, Riley Herbs fifth, A. John sixth, Ryan Sieg seventh, Sammy Smith eighth, Brandon Jones ninth, Justin Allgaier tenth, Parker Klingerman eleventh, Eric Amaro twelfth, Corey Hyman thirteenth, Josh Williams fourteenth, and Haley Deegan fifteenth. Great run for Haley Deegan. Uh, Eric Amaro had a decent run too in his part time schedule this year's Phoenix series, uh, finishing twelfth right there. He only, got, you know, he was. The highest year I got, I think, was maybe like sixth or seventh, the low uh, top tens, top ten spot. The highest he really got was, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth, that kind of range. He never got out to the top five. Had a decent car. Uh, also, great run for Corey Hyman, the Sam Hunt racing car. Good to see him in a part time schedule there, getting a top 15. But yeah, I'm really, ha- I'm impressed with Hannah Deegan. This is one of her only, this is the only track she raced in this Phoenix Series car. So maybe I expected a little bit more for her because uh, she, uh, she was running around the 20th. 20th place spot in most of the race, so she never really cracked the top 10, but good for her. This is her first really, I guess, traditional um, all race in, in this few series this season with this new team, so good run for her. Also, a great run for Ryan C. in a really small team again, so he looks like they're, looks like they're making, I'm not sure if they, they're getting more support this year with Ford or around Shades, but they're, they're showing some good speed, especially with Ryan C. So it's great for him to have a great, great run for a small team. Uh, but besides that, congrats to John. I need to check. Look forward to um, next week at Phoenix. Jordan Lagano won the pole for the Cup Series race. Uh, Kyle Larson finished second. I expect the 100 cars. I, I believe William Byron finished qualified third. Uh, I expect the 100 cars to be really fast. I don't know if Joey's going to have that long run speed that the Chevys just seem to have that, and that's what makes him so good here. I pick Kyle Larson to win. I, I see that definitely being a real possibility. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how. You know, Danny Hamlin qualified bad. He qualified, you know, it was weird. The way the qualifying was is you were pretty much going wide open. And if you had to, any time you had to lay off the gas a little bit, that was going to hurt your time. I'm not a big fan of the whole wide open stuff. We shouldn't be going wide open a mile and a half. You know, it's fast. I just think we, we're taking too much out of the driver's hand. Even though I guess it is in the driver's hand, a lot of it also has to do with the car. If the car's not handling well, or the driver's got to lay off the gas. I don't know. That, to me, is a reason that has to do with not having enough horsepower in the car. You know, in the race, they're definitely going to have to use the throttle. Uh, on and off throttle time uh, because of the way the handling. There's going to be cars around there, around them, so the air is going to be a big deal. Also, the wind could be huge. I'm not sure the wind, I think it was like 50 to 60 degree wind gusts, so I don't think that'll be as bad as it, it was today for tomorrow's race. But all in all, it should be exciting. We're really going to see what some of these teams are made of, especially the Fords and Toyotas with their new body, and uh, who knows. Where the sh- I'm going to see. I think the Chevys are still right there because I think I heard something with Danny Hamlin. You know, the Chevys have had now three years to just work and improve this one car. And, you know, they're not having to worry about a whole new body. And they're not starting from scratch. And we probably won't see the Toyotas and Fords maybe get dominant until maybe later on in the year. But that will definitely be a fun thing to see, you know, those Toyota and Ford trying to chase the Chevy. I think that's how it's going to go, in my opinion. Besides that, thanks guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for my race breakdown of the Pennzoil 400. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you later. Bye.